Good morning. My name's Charlie, and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, I was raised a normal, average American boy. Uh, things started to change, though. About when I turned 14 years old, I started uh, drinking a little bit. And by the time I was 16, I was walking into liquor stores and buying my own drink. By the time I was 18, I was an alcoholic. Um, <clears throat> that's when my life was no longer normal. Uh, my life became very dark and dim. Um, I did things I never thought I would do or say. Uh, and this, this continued uh, for many years, and for many years I was lost. Uh, and I mean literally and physically lost. I do not remember years in my life, but what I did, period, I just don't remember things that happened to me. Uh, however, on January 7th of 2004, uh, an incident happened and um, involved one of my grandchildren. And uh, the next morning when I woke up, my uh, wife and my uh, friend, very good friend, was standing over me. And I looked up and looked around me and I had blood all over me. And, uh, they didn't say anything, they just stared there and looked, and my friend said, are you ready to go? And I sat up and sat there for a minute, and the uh, light came on, and I knew what he meant. He meant, Is it, I'm, I'm ready to go and sober up. And so I thought, and I said yes. Uh, and unbeknownst to me, my wife and he had already made arrangements in San Antonio for me to enter a rehab facility. So I went home, I showered up, my bags were packed, and I was taken to San Antonio to the uh, uh, detox center. And uh, I, was, I placed myself in, I guess, voluntarily. Uh, in there, boy, I thought, man, ooh, there's some spooks in here. I, I'm not sure I belong here. And about two days later, I realized I belonged here heroin addicts, or bipolar, uh, I can just, uh, alcoholics just like me, uh, people have been in four or five times, just keep coming back. Uh, but during this stay there, um, they kept me sober and they sent me to classes, a very regimented routine, and I was required to read a book called Alcoholics Anonymous. And Alcoholics Anonymous says that you have to have a higher power in order for this program to proceed. Well, at first, I uh, rejected God. I said, I'm a higher power. Okay, I'll have a higher power for a while. And so uh, I prayed to a higher power and uh, during rehab. And when I got out, I had to continue an IOP, which is an in, in, uh where I just come in every day for two weeks. And uh, <clears throat> during this, this time, I realized that, uh, that uh, you know, one of the things in Alcoholic Anonymous is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Well, through some prayers, I realized that my higher power was answering my prayers. At that point, I realized there was a God. Uh, so I started praying to God, accepting God in my life to save me from this terrible affliction of alcoholism that it's the most expensive, the Alcoholics Anonymous is the most expensive club in the world to belong to because it takes everything away from you. Everything, nothing is not included. And so I knew I could not go back, and I was praying every day, and uh, I realized that there was a God, because my prayers were being answered. And so I, uh, I realized that I probably should in start including church, and my wife and I discussed it, and the phone rang one day, a good friend of mine said, Charlie, why don't you uh, come to uh, Cowboy Church with us Sunday? I said, you know, Gail and I have been talking about it, and we would love to go to church with you. And so uh, we went to the sale barn, and we went to church, and it was really nice. 
we enjoyed ourselves. So we've been coming back ever since. And I have really come to know Jesus. I know that He answers my prayers when you ask Him. And that, that uh, just to be strong, just to ask God for strength and forgiveness. And He gives you strength and forgiveness. And He's proven this to me time and time again. And, and uh, I wasn't raised to be a fool. And when something works, you stay with it. And so I've been able to stay sober. And without Christ's help, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that it would not work. And that's my story. Oh, uh, uh, while I was in rehab, uh, I realized that my uh, higher power wasn't wasn't uh, wasn't getting it done. Uh, I was having some prayers answered, but I knew that just a higher power wasn't the answer. The answer was I needed Jesus in my life. And uh, that he, being my higher power, is the man I should answer to. That's when I asked Jesus to come into my life and help to keep me stay and help me to stay sober. And uh, I, since that point, I have been praying to Jesus Christ and not a higher power. <laughs> Charlie, as uh, now that you've come to Christ and He's been in your life and you've went through this experience. Uh, what is it now like having a relationship with Jesus? Uh, does he help you? Does you know what? What is it like now that you? Um, and how long have you been sober? Been sober since January 7, 8, January 8, two thousand and four. Um, my life now is is full of sunshine and hope. Uh, I, I pray to God every day, and I ask Him for some small favors. Uh, and uh, I, it seems like he always hears me. Is there uh, still some tough days? There's always tough days in my life. There's days where I want to go back to the drink. Even though I've been sober, it's always going to be a battle as long as I live. Uh, strength, he gives me strength, so much strength, because I know that I can uh, to ask him to uh, help me and I have the power to see it now before it happens. He's given me the power to know the difference between wrong and right before I commit such actions. Um, he, it, there's no, no, no turmoil in my life. It's a yes or no life now. I don't struggle. Uh, I just ask for strength. And I take what's given, no more, no less, and just ask for a little more and work harder each day. And Charlie, if there's somebody sitting out in the crowd today and, and, and they need help or they're not for sure what to do, they feel totally lost, what, what is one thing or what is something that you'd share with them right now to help them? I would say, please quit drinking now. And if you need any help, you call me. And if you are sober, I will help you in any way I can. And, and and how important is it for them to, to to be able to really turn towards Christ in that time? It's absolutely essential because without Christ, uh, you have no strength, in my opinion. He gives you strength, and you have but you need to ask for it first because as an alcoholic, you've done great damage to yourself and everybody around you, and you need all the help you can get.